The second summit between President Trump and North Korea's Kim Jong-un has come to an abrupt end. Meetings between the two in Hanoi, Vietnam today were cut short. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says future meetings are possible, but there are no set plans. According to the president, the talks collapsed over the lifting of sanctions. They were willing to denuke a large portion of the areas that we wanted, but we couldn't give up all of the sanctions for that. We actually had papers ready to be signed, but it just wasn't appropriate. I want to do it right. I'd much rather do it right than do it fast. For more on this now, we want to bring in CBS News military and homeland security analyst Admiral Sandy Winfeld. He's also the uh, former vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Thank you so much for joining us, Admiral. Um, well, good morning. Good morning. So the president, uh, did the president make the right decision, do you think, to walk away from the talks, to cut things up off abruptly and leave the country? Uh, I think he did. I would call this a qualified success, Anne-Marie. If you step back and you think about what wonderful success would have been, it would have been a, a scripted roadmap where each side would give a little bit to the other, uh, and at the end, each side would accomplish what it wanted. Obviously, that didn't happen. If you look at what unqualified failure would have been, it would have been either the president giving too much too fast or both sides walking away angry and bitter, and neither one of those things happened. So I think we sort of ended up in a middle ground that I would actually call a qualified success. Yeah, I think, uh, Admiral, I think you're right about that. I think a lot of people are taking it as such because, and we were discussing this earlier, that, you know, the fact that the president, because he is a very different type of president than his predecessors, uh, came with sort of a different plan, an open plan to engage with North Korea, that even if something didn't happen this time around. Both Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and the President of the United States have said that they are open to further discussions. And at the very least, whoever is president in 2020, if it's President Trump or somebody else, will have this baton, take this baton, and we could see this is the beginning of what could be something uh, very significant for North Korea and the United States in the years ahead. I agree with you, Vlad. And I think that uh, the president actually, uh, whether he was lucky or good, broke the mold of the past where, you know, you normally have lower level bureaucrats and leaders uh, trying to put something together that rises to the top and is finally anointed by the, the senior leaders of, of the two countries. Well, he realized that has not worked over many decades, and he felt that he needed to build trust with Chairman Kim early on or, or nothing was going to happen. And that's the approach that he took. It, it appears to be working so far. And when you look at the results of this summit, he didn't give away uh, something he should not have given away. Um, he actually smoked out the North Korean position, finally, where it was clear that North Korea was asking for essentially all of our bargaining leverage in exchange for something less than what we actually want, and the president didn't fall for that. And neither side walked away angry and bitter. Uh, there is the possibility that there could be future talks, and North Korea has agreed to extend their embargo on testing of nuclear weapons and missiles. So uh, I think there's a, a good potential road ahead but I'd also say there are more pathways to failure here than there are to success. You know, Admiral, when we were talking about this yesterday and we didn't know what the outcome was going to be, we spoke a lot about the role of some of the allies in the region, that though this may be a conversation between two world leaders, uh, the, nothing can really get done without the allies signing on. South Korea, China, and even Japan looking on. How should they feel about uh, how this summit went? Well, I think they should be confident that the president uh, intends to be a firm negotiator with the North. That's what the regional countries, certainly uh, South Korea and Japan, are worried about. <clears throat> so I think they should lay those fears to rest. We've seen in the past that when all of those parties are at the table, almost nothing can get done. There are just too many people there. But at the same time, uh, it's very important that we continue to consult with our allies in the region to make sure that we know what their views are and that we can debrief them on what we've heard from the North. Uh, hopefully that will continue to happen. Uh, there is one sort of red flag, Admiral, that I'd like to raise with you, uh, given your experience in the theater. Uh, the president has been unusually friendly towards uh, Kim Jong-un uh, to the point where he was asked by a reporter yesterday about the death of Otto Warmbier, an American who subsequently died in a North Korean prison when he was finally released. At least he was in a coma. Um, and he said that he spoke to Chairman Kim about it, and Chairman Kim knew nothing about it. I'm paraphrasing uh, the reporting out there. There's been very little talk throughout all of this 
with regards to the brutality of Kim Jong-un's regime, the people who he's imprisoned, the people who he has had executed. I know that on the world stage, he's appeared friendly, he's taking questions, he took a question, I think for the very first time from a, an, an American reporter yesterday, mm -hmm. but let's not forget what that North Korean regime is and what it does to its own people. Um, should the Trump administration going forward at least begin to address that, given that we are kind of at a stalemate here? Well, it's a, it's a tough thing. It, it would greatly complicate the negotiations if the president were to fold in a, a massive human rights reform effort on the part of North Korea. Uh, it, and, and in fact, what is uh, much higher uh, on our interest list is that those nuclear weapons go away. I think he's going to take that on. And if I were uh, to speculate on what the president and Secretary Pompeo are thinking, is that if this negotiation works out, and you open the door to economic development in North Korea and that sort of thing, that perhaps uh, there can be some leverage there or perhaps naturally some of those human rights uh, violations would, would go away. I I'm not that optimistic about that, but I think that's the approach that they probably have to take. At and at the same time, with the Otto Warmbier uh, statement the president made, which I think uh, probably surprised a few people, if you look at it the other way around, if he had said, well, no, I just don't believe Chairman Kim, uh, I think he actually did know about this, uh, that might sour his relationship uh, with the chairman. And so I think the president actually kind of dodged that question in order to preserve that relationship. It's a good point. Uh, Admiral Sandy Winnefeld, former vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, always great to have you, sir, for your perspective. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you.